Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row, where we're learning how to code in GDScript using the Godot engine. In today's lesson, we're going to dive into strings and how to work with them in GDScript. Strings are just pieces of text, but they are super important for displaying information, creating dialogue systems, storing player names, and much more. We'll also cover some common string operations to manipulate and work with text. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is a string? A string in programming is a sequence of characters, which could be letters, numbers, symbols, or spaces. In GDScript, strings are enclosed in either double quotes or single quotes. So let's jump into Godot and start writing some string-based code. So over here, I am using my main script that I've created, and I just have a simple extends node, and I'll create a function underscore ready, which will automatically play as soon as we begin the scene. So I'll create a var, a variable called my string. And I'm just going to type in hello Godot. And then I'll create another variable called another string. And this is going to be GD script is awesome. And now let's go ahead and print my string. And we are also, and let's also print another string. So when I go ahead and hit F5 to run, you'll see on the bottom in our console, it'll print out hello Godot and GD script is awesome. So now let's explore some common string operations. One of the most common things you will need to do is concatenate strings. This means joining two or more strings together. In GDScript, you can use this using the plus operator. So let's go ahead and modify the code. So I'm going to erase all of this and just create a variable called first name is equal to row. And then I'll do a variable last name is equal to coder. And then I'll create another variable called full name, which is going to be first name plus and then I'll create a quote with an empty space inside of it. And then I'll do plus last name. And now let's go ahead and print full name, which is just simply going to be the variable full name. And when I go ahead and print this out, it's going to print out full name row coder. And there you go. By having this simple plus operator, we're able to combine two strings into a single full name. This is also called concatenation. Next, let's see how we can find the length of a string. The length of a string is the numbers of characters it contains. This includes include this also includes spaces. In GDScript, we can use the dot length function to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and just go erase all this and create a variable called my string is equal to hello world. And now I'm just going to simply print the length of the string is, and then I'm going to call the same variable name, which is my string, and then I'm going to add a dot length with parentheses after it. And now when I go ahead and actually run this, it's going to simply print out the length of the string is 13, meaning that there are a total of 13 characters in here. And this is useful when you need to limit input or help validate text. Sometimes you might want to access a specific character in a string. In GDScript, you can do this using indexing. Strings are zero index, which means the first character is at position zero. The second is at position one and so on. So for example, I'll, I'll change my string to the word Godot. Now I'm simply going to print out the first character is, and then I'll call my string. And then in brackets next to it, I'm going to call that zero and then close the curly bracket. And I also want to print the third character is, and I'll call my string again. And then in our brackets, I'm going to call two like so, and I'll hit save and run this. So as you can see in our console, the first character is G and the third character is D in the string Godot. Indexing is super useful when you need to work with individual characters in a string. Next up, let's talk about changing the case of a string. You can convert strings to uppercase or lowercase using the two upper or two lower functions that GDScript already provides for you. So I'll go ahead and erase these prints up to back here and I'm going to write the uppercase version is, and then I'm simply going to just type in a comma and type in my string dot two underscore upper with parentheses afterwards, and then another one to close the print like so. And then I'm also going to print the lowercase version is my string dot two underscore lower. And I can either click on this or hit tab because this is on top to automatically just complete this for me. And don't forget to close off the other curly bracket, which is from our print. And now when I hit save and actually run this, it's simply going to run and it'll print out the uppercase version is Godot in all capital letters and the lowercase version is Godot in all lowercase letters. 
And over here, we by default, we do have it with one uppercase and then the rest is lower. So you can see how it changed on both sides. And that's pretty straightforward. Case conversion is useful when you want to standardize input for example, when comparing user input that may be in different cases. Another handy operation is extracting a substring. A substring is just a smaller part of a string. In GDScript, we use the substr function to do this. You pass in two arguments, the starting index and the number of characters to extract. So let's go ahead and show how to do that. So I'll change this, my string to Godot engine. So I'm simply going to print out substring from index zero of the first five characters is going to be the my string variable dot sub str. And then I'll pass in zero because that's where we're starting. And then five, because that's how many characters we want. And then I'll do another print, which is going to be a simple substring from index six, which is going to be six characters. And then I'll simply call the my string variable and I'll do a dot sub str. And in here, I'm going to pass in six comma six to start from the index of six and pass back six characters. So now when I go ahead and hit play, it's going to say the substring from index zero, the first five characters is Godot. And then the substring from the substring from index six, which is six characters is engine. Perfect. We've extracted Godot in engine as two separate substrings. So one more advanced string operation is string formatting. This allows us to insert variables or other values into a string using placeholders. In GDScript, we use the percent operator for this. So I'll go ahead and erase this and I'll just do something like var name is equal to row and then var variable score is equal to 150. And now I'm simply gonna print player percent s has a score of percent d comma and then I'll add a percent after, and then in brackets, I'm gonna pass in the variable name, comma, score, like so. So I'll go ahead and print this, and it's gonna say player row has a score of 150. So let me go over this briefly because this might be a little confusing. So in this example, percent %s is a placeholder for a string, and percent %d is a placeholder for a number. We use the percent operator followed by a list of values to insert them into a string. String formatting like this is useful when you need to build strings with dynamic data, like scores, player names, or other variables. All right, so let's go ahead and recap what we learned today. Strings are sequences of characters enclosed in quotes. We concatenate strings using the plus operator. We can get the length of the string using the dot length function. We can access individual characters in a string using indexing. We can change the case of a string using two upper and two lower functions. We can extract substrings using the substring function. We can also use string formatting with placeholders to insert values into strings. Strings are a fundamental part of almost every program you'll write. And knowing how to manipulate them gives you a lot of power when building your projects. Thanks for tuning in today. If you found this lesson helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more GDScript tutorials. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching Code of the Row and keep coding.